I'm Ashley Pickle. That's Greg Powers. And this is this week. And Curtin. Yes. I got my throat. Let's go. It is this week in recruiting with our director of recruiting, Greg Powers. And of course, this is presented by our good chicken friends at Chicken Express. Delicious chicken friends. So good. Mal, we had Chicken Express. I told them uh, last week that we had Chicken Express the Friday before last and that it was outstanding. We watched Gossip Girl and ate Chicken Express. Yeah, I had, um, so I had half and half tendies, half spicy, half regular. I got some fries. I don't typically get the fries because their fried okra is so good, but sometimes I do get their fries because they're just so good. Mm -hmm. Like the taste of them is just unlike any other fast food restaurant that I've been to. Um, And then I got the biscuit because I'm a big biscuit gal. So it was so I disagree with you. Man, I really want Chicken Express. Whatever. We've we've turned Tepper, so I think that – with due time, we'll be able to turn Mallory. But regardless, let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off with our prospect on the rise, another guy you got to see out there at the Northwest 7-on-7 seven seven state qualifier in McKinney 2024 inside linebacker, Jonathan Agumadu. There you go. Did I get it? Boom. Jonathan Agumadu nice. was named a DCTF three-star following his performance out there at the 7-on-7 SQT, what did you see that you liked about Mr. Agumadu? Well, first off, he's a guy who quickly passes the eyeball test. He is jacked, like (laughs) totally jacked. Um, What I really liked about him, because, you know, he came over from J.J. Pierce, uh, move in from J.J. Pierce. He's rocked up, right? So he spent spent a lot of time playing with his hand in the dirt at J.J. Pierce. Got to see him in 7-on-7 action, actually patrol sideline to sideline, playing coverage some. He had two interceptions that I saw, and our friend Mike Roach said he had an interception in the game that I didn't see. Wow. So that was three interceptions in a you know three pool play games, able to exert his dominance on that side of the football. And colleges have been loving what they've been seeing out of him too during the spring evaluation period. A lot of schools have been um, extending him offers. He's picked up 12 scholarship offers. He's picked up in-state offers from North Texas, SMU, and Texas State. Oklahoma State was his second P5 offer. Uh, Missouri was his first, but he's already scheduled an official visit to go see the Pokes up in Stillwater on June 14th. So I think that that was like a needle-moving offer probably in his recruitment. All indications are is that Oklahoma State's uh, done a pretty good job early on. So it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. But a fast riser out at McKinney, a defense that also boasts linebacker Riley Pettijohn mm-hmm. and athlete Mackay Frazier. Um who's already committed to Oregon State, who will go over and play some linebacker as well when he's not playing running back. Uh, So this is a very talented linebacker unit in the Lone Star State. Maybe I would say in, you know, one of the top two, one of the top one through three linebacker units right now with the addition of Jonathan Agumadu. Yeah, that's super interesting to hear that he's got great hands too and is able to pick the ball because every single one of these highlights is him just absolutely obliterating through any sort of offensive yeah, line. Yeah. And so to have that, I mean, college coaches with that frame, knowing that he's able to have that explosive, like, especially right, I mean, just the explosion through the offensive line is crazy. But if you have good hands, he's going to blow up like crazy. It's cool It's cool to see, too, like, all right, so you see him wearing number nine. He's playing on the defensive front. He's about 6'1", 6'2", 215, 220, something like that. But he looks bigger as a defensive lineman, right? Yeah. Like he, it's like one of those um, you optical know, when, illusions. Yeah, almost. like when you stare at those uh, puzzles online and you're like, "Can you see what I can never see it?" Yeah. <laughs> but when I look at uh, Agumadu playing on the defensive front, he looks heftier than what he actually is. Maybe he shed some weight heading into McKinney to play, you know, more of a stand-up role. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe that's something that's happened. Um, but he he can really move. Well, it'll be a lot of fun to watch that entire uh, 2024 McKinney Lions class. Moving on now to our commit of the week. How about this? The hometown kid, El Paso Pebble Hills 2024 quarterback Gail Achoa has committed to UTEP. Let's go. Let me tell you, after uh, we've we've watched this guy play for a couple of years now, and you could always tell he was something special, not just for playing out there at in El Paso, but just special altogether. And this is a massive 
get for Dana, Dana Dimmel and his UTEP Miners squad to keep the hometown quarterback there with the Miners? He has a really long highlight tape. I think it's like 11 minutes when we start rolling <laughs> it right here. So you may not get to see his elite athleticism because most of the tape is front-loaded with his throws. Uh, but I like what he brings to the passing game because he seems to make quick decisions where to go with the football. He has the overall athleticism to – extend plays, um, make plays outside of the pocket. And I, I really feel like he is a good fit with the c quarterback commitment they got from Bastrop last year, Seth Mauser, who mm -hmm. was a big pocket-style quarterback. So with this class, they went with a, a guy who is vastly different, um, someone who, I mean, he rushed for close to 1,200 yards last year. So his athleticism is a, a, apparent, and he's a guy who can probably make that quarterback room a more well-rounded one. Um, and I also think that he's athletic enough if the depth chart at quarterback didn't work out that he could play another position. Um, but there's a whole lot to like if you're a UTEP fan getting a quarterback from the home, t you know, the hometown team, basically staying in, in the city um, and has this level of talent. There's another kid out there in El Paso named Shea Smith, who is a quarterback linebacker recruit. Um, and I think that they're probably the two top rated in the t class of 2024 kids in El Paso. So uh, this is a, this is a really big pickup for the minors, as you, as you said off the top. Oh yeah. Especially moving into that new look conference USA to the caliber of size of the recruits that are going into that new look conference USA, being able to have a smaller, but, quarterback that is really able to use the scramble drill as a as an option yeah. will absolutely be pay dividends for Utah. Passed for 1607, rushed for 1137, scored 31 total touchdowns, so he's like a a well-balanced guy. Yeah, and that's exactly what the miners are looking for. It's this week in recruiting. We're here with our director of recruiting Greg Powers taking a look at some of the top prospects in the state as we move on to our underclassmen of the week. We're heading down south to Fort Bend Marshall. Surprise, surprise. They have another recruit yes, to keep do. an eye on. This one, 2025 cor cornerback Caleb Chester, 6'1", 170, and is closing in on the 20 offer mark as he dials in another one from Oregon, bringing his tally to 19 this week. What is making this Buffalo special? Well, he's a uh, he's got the pedigree, first and foremost. His brother, Jacoby Chester, is a defensive back at Sam Houston. Um, and Caleb actually, I think, plays with a little bit more of a chip on his shoulder. He's a guy who's not afraid to come down and lay the wood from his cornerback spot. As a matter of fact, I would, don't think he'd have any problem playing any of the positions in the secondary. He could play nickelback. He could play safety if need be. Uh, but I really like his size out on the island, 6'1", 170 pounds. He's got some really good offers coming his way. Um as a matter of fact, during the spring evaluation period, he added some in-state offers from SMU, Texas, and Texas A&M. Arkansas and Auburn also offered him this spring. Um, so his his list is really starting to take off. And, and when you have Texas and Texas A&M in-state, I think that sends, like, everybody oh, after yeah. you. Because if you get one, it's cool. But if you get both of them, that kind of signifies that um, everybody – in the in the country might be coming your way he dealt with a little bit of an injury issue last year only played in six games um so as he's been able to prove that he's 100 percent healthy that's why you've seen his um offer list start to skyrocket the talent has always been there i'm almost certain i have to look these things up because i forget i'm almost certain he was a dctf rising top 25 freshman how about prospect that? so i mean nice. um this is a guy who's been well known and now his offer list is starting to reflect the talent that we all saw early on. Well, and I love what you say about, you know, Texas and Texas a and both offering a kid. And this is really, this pays a lot of dividends because I know Fort Bend Marshall has a deep roster right now, kind of even down into right. the youth of that. So that's going to start getting eyes on those players really early as well with all of these different scouts coming in. So incredibly interested to see what Caleb Chester brings to the table. Finally, a household name at this point as we move on to our recruit of the week as Willis 2024 quarterback DJ Lagway has officially accepted an invitation to the Under Armour All-America game and the Elite 11 finals, which is huge for any quarterback in the state of Texas. Um, the Florida commit is a four-star prospect checking in at number eight overall in the 2024 Rising Hot 100. Yeah, I really like uh, DJ Lagway. He's one of the state's best all-around athletes and he just also happens to be a great quarterback, quarterback. right <laughs> like 
He can do a little bit of everything. Very strong arm, very adept runner. And he had himself some kind of week. I'm sure this may have happened before. But I can't remember someone getting an Under Armour or accepting an Under Armour All America game invite and getting named to the Elite Eleven Finals in the same week. And it happened within on the same day, I think. Within oh, wow. twenty four to forty eight hours, DJ Lagway got both of those high honors. Um, two of the most prestigious events for recruits. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is really big. You know, Texas has won the last two Elite 11 finals. Yeah. The MVP award has went to Jackson Arnold and, and Cade Cl- Klubnick. Yeah, yep. Cade, mm-hmm. Cade Klubnick. So Lagway, I think, heading into the event is the number one quarterback in the state. Mm-hmm. So if there were a chance to repeat that, maybe Lagway could make it three in a row that'd be really cool i don't i definitely don't think one state's ever one state may have never won back to back right maybe california back in the mark sanchez era i can't i yeah. have to like verify it there's a list out there, out there. <laughs> but uh i doubt that anybody's ever won three n- any states ever won three in a three row. in a row no and and this is huge for willis as a program too because i feel like obviously jackson arnold a really good quarterback coming out of denton guyer not surprising Cade klubnick a really good quarterback coming out of austin west like when have we ever heard of that but i feel like dj lagway as an individual player has become kind of a household name but i don't know still if this willis program is one that you're looking at going oh they're absolutely making it to at&t stadium you know so i feel like that would really pay dividends into getting some more eyeballs down there if you're not just a recruiting nerd i think willis is probably as far as upward trajectory is concerned with prospects willis is becoming like that stop Good. Like they are starting to, you know, stack up talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lagway has plenty of guys to throw the football to in that offense. Uh, they got the Jenkins kid that came over um, to play safety. They've Dejon Moore moved down to Houston from Allen. He's a six foot three, three hundred and five pound. I'm telling you, Dejon Moore is going to be the next guy at Willis that could be like a top mm-hmm. ten in the state type of recruit he is a monster just one of those pancake spas- specialists <laughs> um so i'm gonna say pancake spatula <laughs> same thing same difference <laughs> pancake specialist pancake spatula dejon moore there's our a next dude. trophy <laughs> yeah but willis um and what coach miller has going on down there it's going to be really exciting to watch because willis is a, a team on the rise and they're going to have a lot of prospects for me to follow over the next few cycles he, I was trying to think of a, a good transition, and I had it, and then I you kept you talking. Well. I don't know. Well, I had it, and then you kept talking, and I was so interested in what you were saying. Our pancake spatula here at DCTF. He is Greg Powers, uh, our DCTF director of recruiting. You can follow him at G Scout on Twitter. See all his fine work on TexasFootball.com.